In the last video I was looking at this, uh, so this is an I2C tester um, monitor device and um, in the last video we, we did a bit of uh, experimentation with sensors and, and instructing the sensors from a utility, well first in, in Windows and then uh, on the Mac. So we're going to look at the Mac screen again in a moment uh, because what I want to do this this uh, for this video is I want to test the pass through mode. So th in the last video we were using this as an active element to interact with the with the sensors, um, but it's also possible to use this as a passive monitor. So all of these three sets of wires are interconnected with each other, and it's possible to put this into uh, a mode such that it's not electrically affecting the bus any longer. So what we can do is we can connect these two together. Uh, via this and then we should be able to see the traffic that's being sent and devices that are being activated and so on. So uh, just just before I go to the to the Mac to show you the utility there, um, let me just talk about that aspect of um, uh, active pull-ups and whether this is an, an active or a, or a passive device. On the I2C bus uh, you've got a master and uh, or, t or typically you've got one master and you've got multiple slaves and um, so forgetting about the power wires the plus five volts and ground for the moment um, the main important lines are SDA which is the data connection and SCL which is the c control connection now in order for multiple devices to hang off the same bus uh, what you need is these um, pull-up resistors so actually what the, the master has is a couple of resistors which are connected to the to the 5 volt rail at the top so the idea here is that if nobody is uh, actively um, switching the bus here then um, by virtue of this resistor here this will be at 5 volts so so the uh, the line here will be um, will be floating at 5 volts. Now in, inside the slave there will be a uh, typically a MOSFET so the way that this device does its switching is um, you have your um, MOSFET like this pulling down to ground so this is the the switching input here controlled by the device and uh, so basically the line is floating high all of the time but then when the the uh, slave wants to signal something switches on the gate of the MOSFET and then this is pulled down to ground so then the SDA line becomes uh, zero volts and um, the the pull-up resistor there is limiting the current so the current is then flowing from the 5 volt through the bus down through the MOSFET to ground um, but there's not uh, you know you're not connecting the 5 volt rail to the ground rail directly and so this this is the way that the slaves work so they're switching MOSFETs to to um, uh, switch the the bus between uh, 0 volts and 5 volts and you can see that in this setup it's possible for uh, multiple multiple devices to have their MOSFETs across the bus at the same time uh, without uh, uh, electrically short-circuiting each other. So um, with that bit of theory out of the way let's go and look at the Mac screen um, and I'll, I'll switch on the monitor mode so we can do a bit of experimentation. So from the last video you might remember that one of the problems I had was trying to get the, uh, the GUI utility working on the Mac. So here you see I do have it uh, running. I had to, had to install a library called WX Python, and I'll put the instructions um, to follow down in the link below. Um, but you run the uh, I squared C GUI as a Python program, and you can see it looks very much like the one that we were looking at in uh, in Windows. Uh, up the top here, you've got the voltage and current usage and the onboard temperature as we saw with the um, utility from the command line when, when we did the I command from the command line. 
and uh, it has much the same layout. Uh, all I'm going to do here is switch it into uh, monitor mode, which should remove the uh, the pull-ups from the circuit, as far as, far as I can um, guess anyway. Um, so I'll press that. Uh, and now we should get a pass through and we should be able to see when uh, traffic is sent through the bus uh, from the micro bit to the sensor. So we'll, we'll have a look at that. The uh, PCF8591, uh, so this is the uh, A to D converter if you remember. So I've got an LDR on here and I've got a small program inside the uh, BBC Microbit, which is reading the LDR using the I squared C bus. In the middle here, of course, we've got the I squared C driver, and um, you can see that there's some activity. Let's just, just have a look at that in more detail. It's a little bright in here at the moment, but you can see that uh, to some degree, I think, on the screen. So we can see the SDA and SCL going up and down at the bottom. Uh, we can see that uh, device 48 has been is, is active on the bus, and you can see the data coming out. So this is this is basically reading port 40 and um, and displaying the uh, displaying the value on the screen of the micro bit. So I'll, I'll show you the program in a moment. I, I wrote it in the micro bit uh, make code uh, block block language, which we've seen before on the channel. But there you are. So that's this is quite nice because the device is now fully passive um, in pass-through mode, and it'll show any activity going on on the bus here. Now I'm wondering if I if I plug in another device, if it will show up here uh, on the screen. Let's give that a try. So here's the E squared C ROM again. Let's plug that one in, and. Um, See what happens. No, it's not been detected, but then my program doesn't read that port five zero, so maybe that's that's why it doesn't actually show up on the display. So let's let's have a look at my program on uh, on the microbit website and I'll explain what I'm doing there. This is a relatively simple program, so I've got this on start block. So this is how the whole thing gets fired off when you start the uh, the BBC micro bit. So here I've cre created this variable called PCF8591, set the value to 72, which is the same as um, hex 48. So so this is the I squared C address of that PCF8591. And then um, we've got this while loop, so while true means carry on doing this forever. And basically this breaks down into uh, writing the address onto the I squared C bus, as, as we did manually in the, in the last video. I've got a small pause in there. And then I've got these two reads. So I read from the uh, port address 48, read the first value. Uh, and discard it, and then I read the va second value, uh, and that becomes the variable LDR. And then on the dis display of the micro bit, I'm displaying the LDR value, so what we read from the I squared C bus. Uh, again, a small pause, a thousand milliseconds, so one second pause before it goes round and it does the write and read cycle again. So the the number scrolling across the display on the micro bit is. Um, is the value that's been read from from I squared C. So what I could do now is put another write in here, this time to the the other address, the 0, 0 x 50, uh, which should be 80 in decimal. Um, and if, if I do a write to that port or re read from that port, then we should see uh, some activity for a port 50 on the display of the I squared C driver. So why don't I just try that? Uh, 
Uh, so if I duplicate this, I probably want a new variable. Let's get one of those. So this uh, this was a two byte value, wasn't it? So we'll try and do that. Uint sixteen should be a two byte quantity, and we were putting twenty in there, weren't we? So for completeness, we'll do that. So two two zero in hex is thirty two in decimal, and we'll write that into there. Okay. So now we've set the address to zero uh, x fifty, and we're going to do a write to 0x50 before we do 48 so I'll save that and we'll download that into the micro bit so this this code I will um, I will share I can I can share the script I'll, I'll share the uh, uh, the link to the script uh, down in the section below the comment section below and also as usual I'll publish the code to my um, github account so if you look at if you click on the JavaScript button you can see a version of this that's been interpreted as as JavaScript so sometimes it's more compact and easy to to deal with the JavaScript uh, so I'll just finish rebooting the uh, the micro bit and then we'll have a look at the screen and see if that device has popped up. Now you should be able to see on the on the screen there so the uh, we've got the 4.8 device, we've also got the 5.0 device so you can see that we've managed to uh, activate that one by doing a write to that port as well so that's quite neat you can see all of the interaction with the different devices So another cool thing, if you if you're eagle-eyed, you might have spotted that some other devices have lit up here as well, and that's because actually internally on the micro bit there are several uh, I squared C devices that are actually built into the microcontroller itself. So there's a uh, a gravitometer um, and a compass, and these are uh, although they're on on chip. Uh, that they're actually on inside some of the chips on the micro bit. They're still on the I squared C bus. So the these devices that you can see here are not phantoms. They're actually the micro bit speaking to different devices that are um, accessible on the board. So I'm very happy with that overall. Um, you know this is quite a useful piece of test equipment and um, you know a bit of fun to experiment with uh, let me know your comments down below and uh, by all means share my micro bit code and um, make changes and uh, tell me what you do with this and if you uh, if you buy one of these yourselves okay thanks for watching see you next time